So welcome back everybody to my channel. I knew that um, with my job, let me tell you guys something. I have been struggling with this job, struggling with bad these, these special companies for, I've been struggling for since April of last year. And I made the move into this place and I'm also looking at other stuff, but I had a very, I was going through so much with that position and I knew that it was going to be coming to an end, man. I didn't get fired today, but I went to log into everything and I was, first of all, I wasn't on the schedule. I was not on the schedule. And so I emailed my new manager because I was switching projects. And um, she said, remember, we told you guys last week that y'all are going to be going into production this week. So basically all last week, we were trying, I was training for another insurance company. And then she was like, remember, we told you, and I promise you guys, they did not tell us specifically what we were going to be doing today. The guy that was training us, he pretty much said that. Some of us were going to be staying with him. Some of us were going to be moved over to the other program. But he didn't tell us how we were going to log in. My thing is, if I see that I'm not on the schedule for something, that's a red flag. That's a major, major red flag. And our group started out with, see, my group originally started out with, like, coming into this uh, project with this major company. We Blue Cross Blue Shield, we started out with maybe 75 agents. Then we were down to like 43 agents. Then I think at last check, we were down to like 31 agents. But you got to keep in mind, this is a business that has multiple agents on multiple different projects. So... The last check that I got, guys, this is a this is another thing with the company. They nickel and dime you like they nickel and dime you so much. And you don't get your free hours like I don't think I have worked a company that have operated like this probably for. Since I was like in my early 20s, I don't even say I mean, yeah, early 20s or so. So. They nickel and dime you for your hours. You're supposed to be a certain hourly rate, but they want to change that because they want everybody to, um, in instead of giving you your extra hour, I mean, your extra dollar per hour or whatever, they said coming into the new year, they were going to change our rate to a dollar less per hour. It was like being nickel and dimed, your schedule changing, them losing projects, people leaving, People getting fired, people being at work, but they're not at work. It was like a lot of different things going on at all at one time. And I was jumping through all the different hoops since April of last year, guys. Since April of last year, my situation with the houseless stuff or whatever has really actually gotten worse. <laughs> and I hear people say it all the time. YouTube is not a career, blah, 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 blah. But when you are trying to work with a lot of these companies and these companies are nickel and diamond you, your projects are changing, you up one day and down the next, they soft firing people. Uh, if you're, if you're any, any kind of contractual position, even if I'm full time, but it was, it's like a contractual position with different companies. You are literally fighting for your life to make nothing, make crumbs. It's times that I was fighting for days that I know I worked and they that the money wasn't on my check. I did over 70 enrollments for, for um, this 
Medicare season and I I got a check of like a thousand dollars for like 70 enrollments. 70 plus enrollments. That's not even $100 per enrollment. And as a person with a license, you can make so much more money than that. I mean, when you when I say insurance is a lucrative business, if you are paired up with the right company and you're more of an independent agent. And so sitting here looking at this, guys, I don't know why they had a comments turned off. I don't, I don't personally have comments turned off. Let me go make sure that I have the comments for you guys. I'm going to save the changes again. And hopefully you guys, oh, there you go. What's going on? So I must, it's my fault to a degree because before I moved to this location, very, very nice hotel, very nice. There is a problem with the hotel. The internet is not fast. It's not fast internet. It's fast enough to me to do what I'm doing for whatever reason, <laughs> right? So let me see if you guys are commenting because I want to talk specifically to you guys. It is, I have never in my life, even with everything last year, you guys, like, like, I mean, the year before, like everything that was going on, these braids, man. I ordered this hair, and this hair is like the longest hair I've ordered in my life. <laughs> so I'm saying all this, say like, I never in my life had so much fear in my life about just because moving out of the house, it wasn't just about the money. It was like I didn't have connections. I needed connections as far as getting a hookup, getting me a place to live or whatever coming out the house. And I didn't have it. Coming out of the house, working YouTube, having my private uh, groups, making money that type of way, even some of my affiliate, marketing, like even with self lender, I saw that my efforts that I put into the job, I got paid for those efforts. I made a sizable, decent income. The mistake I made though, was I didn't pivot and start another business that was just as successful as YouTube had been for me at that point. I listened to people tell me over the past two years to get a real effing job. And when I tell y'all this job, these, these jobs and see, cause you can get a job, but it doesn't put you in a position. It doesn't mean that you have a position because it's a difference between a career and a job. I was acting out of fear. I jumped into these jobs and I haven't struggled so much in life guys. I haven't struggled financially this much in my life since Two thousand six, two two thousand since Caitlin was like a toddler, like even before. No, before then, I haven't struggled this much in my life since I was like eighteen years old. <laughs> and I'm not saying that I was making millions every single month in YouTube or any platform or whatever. I'm saying that the amount of energy and time and effort it takes to be losing in a position, in a job, in a dead end job, is so mentally and financially and psychologically just draining. You know, you're putting in all these hours, you're jumping through all these hoops. Then when you finally say, okay, this is exactly how much money I can afford per month. This is exactly how much money I'm going to get per check or whatever. You're not even getting it. So when I log, went to log in this morning, yeah, I told, I showed y'all my screen. My other screen had gotten busted when I moved, which was fine. The laptop that I was using anyways, I was having like little, little glitchy issue, issues because it was like a used laptop or whatever. And I was like, that's fine. That's fine or whatever. And so I was like, you know, this would be the perfect time for me to transition into my new laptop, which, which is actually my new computer system and start with the new uh contract with Etno, Etno or whatever. That was the furthest thing from the truth. So it was around like maybe seven o'clock yesterday evening. I went to look for my schedule. Now, a couple of weeks, about a week and a half back, I looked at my schedule and they had taken me off of a whole day. Like a whole day was missing off my schedule. So I emailed my first, my new boss and I'm like, look, I don't see 
that it was December the 13th. I said, December the 13th is not, it's not in this, it's not, I'm not scheduled on that day, even though I worked that day. Even though I was having technical difficulties, this company is riddled with technical difficulties because not only do you log into their system, you have to log into a proprietary system so that they feel like you're not working on other stuff while you're at work. So it's like you got to go into a proprietary system. Then you go into a system. Then you go into other systems like you go into your website you go into your team chats. You go into your Zoom. You go into the other proprietary information that they have for signing people up into the program, you know, for insurance or whatever. So <laughs> thank you so much. So. I was having a, some sort of glitch, some sort of issue. So when I called tech this morning, I mean, so when I started with the new system, I knew I was going to have to go back into the proprietary systems. When I got ready to get into the proprietary systems this morning, uh, when I talked to tech, I talked to like three different tech agents. They finally said, OK, well, we want you to do a speed test. I knew the Internet here was it, it had issues, but I didn't know it had them kind of issues. So when I finally got to tech, tech finally did a, told me to do a speed test. Basically, tech told me they're not going to be able to give me uh, the applications I need to install on my new system for me to continue to work today. So then I contact my boss or whatever. I, I go back into the training Zoom or whatever. that It was nothing but four people in that training Zoom. It was four people in the training Zoom. It was almost as if... because. Last Friday, everybody that was in that training Zoom, it was 20 people that started out with the training for the new company with Edna. By the time Friday hit last week, we were down to 14 people, 13 people, 13 people, including the person that's training us. Then today, it was like I wasn't on the schedule. Last night, I wasn't on the schedule. I'm asking the, these people, why are we not on the schedule, blah, 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 blah. Long story short, they steadily plucking us off one by one for no reasons. They don't have a reason. A lot of times what happens is people have become disgruntled with the company and they're in these, they're just mentally done. Like if, if you've ever been let go from a position and you almost want to like start cheering. So I told my boss this morning, I said, hey, what I'll do is. I'll figure out the internet thing and I'll give you an answer by tomorrow. So I didn't quit and they didn't fire me. However, how, I mean, because my thing is, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. Like I was jumping through so many different hoops to keep these jobs, you guys, because I let people get in my head and tell me, okay, you need to get a job. You need to get a job. You need to get a job. Yes, you do need that. It's like anybody who's an entrepreneur knows you need multiple streams. But when, your job become your life to the point where I wasn't getting a lot of rest. I was beyond stressed out and I'm not making any, hardly any money. And then I'm already in a houseless situation. It's kind of like, where do you stop getting beat? <laughs> you know what I mean? At, at which point? So what I may do, I think that it'd be the best business decision to move to make is to see if I can take a leave of, ab leave of absence from my job. That's probably the best option for me right now. In the meantime, I need to continue to build up the Patreon groups. Basically, I have enough money to last me for a two-week period at the most. I need to pursue other stuff. And in the meantime, I do need to consider uh, another different position. Another big part of it, like I told y'all a couple of weeks back, maybe a couple of months, maybe about a month and a half back, maybe six weeks back, was I got hired with that one company, but because I didn't have hardwired internet, I wasn't able to continue with that company. But that company was worse than this company when it came to getting rid of people. I'm not understand. I've never worked. Guys, listen, I'm not in my 50s. I'm old enough, though. <laughs> I have never in my life worked with companies that operated like this. I've had, I thought I had some pretty bad positions and I'm not talking about just like fast food or like that's teenage type stuff. I'm talking about, we're, we're talking about 
legit bit businesses. Businesses has been around 10, 20, 30 years. I think my company been around maybe 16 years. I'm, I know it's upwards over, I know it's upwards over 10. I know it's about 16 years or something. Let me say it one more time. I have never in my life ever worked for a company that operates like this. I've never seen it. I've never seen it before in my life. I've never seen a turnover so high to where you like communicating with somebody one day and the next day they're gone. We even had, um, and I'm not trying to make light of this or anything. We even had one of our lead trainers die. Like it was just so many things going on with this company when I transitioned into this company. They told us, um, I know, I don't know what they told other people when they got hired or whatever. They said if we were pretty good that we could make thirteen thousand dollars this Medicare season. Thirteen thousand dollars this Medicare season. If you don't do, if you don't have a license in insurance, you don't have a real estate license, you've never done anything like that. You would not understand that in the reality, if I was to if I was to enroll 70 people into Medicare and I'm going to give you a, a, a basic number. If it's if this because that's a very low number, 13,000 is a very minimal low number. If you if you're doing Medicare. I won't say so much Medicaid, but if you're doing Medicare, you're doing life insurance, you're doing any time types of life insurance, any types of insurance, health health related. So they said we make we could make 13,000. So 70 enrollments and I'm going to give it uh the minimum. With the 70 enrollments that I did, 70 enrollments. My paycheck if I was an independent agent and I had enrolled all those people. I'm not even talking about the $600 rate. When you enroll somebody new into Medicare, it's $600 for that one person to enroll that one person with the company. So I'm trying to understand why the company can't just pay people fairly. So if I would have enrolled all those people on my own, can y'all see this on the screen? Let me see. Let me see if y'all can see this on the screen. There you go. Y'all can't see it. You see that number right there? Let me show y'all something else right quick. I let fear hold me back. I let my situation and my circumstances hold me back. I should have spent the $200 or whatever it took for me to get my AHIP and enroll, even if I would have enrolled a fraction of those people, to enroll people, to re-enroll a person into Medicare it's, four, it's about $450 per person. So with the, what I just showed y'all on the screen, I essentially missed $31,500 this season. That's the low end. Let's say, I'll, I'll say 45 of those enrollments were new enrollments. Uh, let me see, yeah, 45 are new enrollments. And I know the rate for a new enrollment. If four or five of the enrollments that I did this season were brand new people coming to Medicare, transitioning to Medicare, getting ready for their new plan or whatever, supplemental uh, Medicare Advantage, I would have made, hold on, I want y'all to see this. Do you see that number right there? Do you, do you see that number? If I were to enroll 45 people this whole entire season into a new Medicare plan by myself, on my own, through my own broken, I have I have the LLC. I have the business stuff together. I would have made $27,000 in a six-week in a, in a six to two-month period. I would have made... $27,000. Do you understand this? 
Do y'all understand this? I have to make major money moves in the next couple of weeks just to get ahead. Just 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 to survive. <laughs> okay. What I'm gonna need to do um, over the next couple of weeks, besides like survive, these two jobs that I got in the past year have completely bankrupted me. Like completely, completely, completely bankrupted me. When I first came out that house, you guys, I used to have so much of my money saved in between my stays. I knew I had a long road ahead of me because I had didn't have enough distance in between getting that out, coming out of the house, and then having student loans and things like that. I do have some things I want to apply for, but until I get my money minimally at six k a month, I'm not gonna move in nowhere, guys. I'm not gonna be because my debt to income ratio is not gonna be what it need to be. I can twenty. I am so grateful that 2024. I'm gonna have to not go this route ever again. I cannot get another job and take another risk like I did. And I'm I, I'm taking every day that I'm trying to make it, guys. As far as like just making enough money to get to the next level or whatever, it's a risk. But what I realize is, let me see, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, for the past eight months, I've taken the big, biggest risk of my life, putting my life in someone else's hands and clocking in to a position where there's no, you don't know where you're going to be from one end to the next with the company. It's hard to go from being a person that is very self-reliant, very self-scheduled to working for a company where every day is something new and different and it ain't it ain't never positive <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was just like it was like torture you know one of the things that um i'm not gonna say too much but one of the things because i'm gonna definitely take them off my linkedin but one of the things i noticed about the company for the Stick with it for a while, baby. I don't even make enough to even I don't I don't even make enough with that company right now to even stay somewhere pretty much. No, 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 baby. You not you ain't hearing me. Beyond paying rent or a hotel or whatever, you gotta still like eat, live, and survive. I don't make enough with that company now, especially when they want to take the dollar away per hour, then they want to take your hours down. And then they want to demand you work all different types of hours or whatever. I don't make enough to even survive anymore. I have sat up and allowed the wheels to roll off my life. I, you can, I, I don't know about the assistance thing because I apply for that stuff. When I tell y'all these waiting lines for assistance, I even looked into uh, uh, something that you should always be able to look into. And they say they totally tapped out. Like these people are saying that they, I'm not going to, I am not going down the government assistance route because it ain't going to fucking work. It's too many people doing the same thing. Like everybody's running to that government cheese line. That's the problem. <laughs> you know, I looked into something that made, that would have made sense and it's tapped out. Like they don't, they're not even doing that. I don't want to say it on here because I do know that some people be trying to watch my channel that work with my company or whatever. But I looked into that. That's, 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 it was like, it. <laughs> this is crazy. So it's the end of that. I think that I will take that leave if I can. There's no, there's not even any other options that even make sense for whatever reason. You go to apply for something that you should be able to. <laughs> it is so overly saturated. The the government, the help or whatever government help and all of that. Like them, those lists are long. They are so long, guys. I had gotten um, housing. I had a, I had, I'm trying to remember exactly where I was because I know I was in Houston when I got the letter. I drove to my mailbox one day and I looked in it and it was not even, this not even six months ago. So I'm just trying to give a time frame, but I know it wasn't even six months ago. Because I haven't even been back here for six months, back in Dallas for six months. So I went to my mailbox and I got a letter from um, 
I think it was housing or something. And I think they said that my number or whatever was going to be coming up. And I was like so many days shy of responding to that letter because I was living like way over here. And my mailbox was like way, uh, it's Houston. It was like an hour away. My mailbox was like an hour away. And so what I had set up, it was like, you know how you have your, um, they give you a preview or they send you a preview of what's coming in the mail or whatever. I have that. I still have that set up right now. And I do not have access to getting my mail. Because right now where I'm at, this stay is a good stay, but I have to make a decision. Am I going to be in a decent stay and maybe go out here and look for something else or, or do something online? Or am I going to leave this place hoping to keep that job? And y'all already know what's going on with that position. <laughs> Working for these companies has bankrupted me in the past eight months. I've basically been in survival mode. Do y'all know I could have ran up the bag on YouTube and make, been making at least three a month right now? I'm never going to listen to people again that don't know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> I I went and got those the little skills. Y'all remember I did that? You go on my LinkedIn. I got me some project management certification. I got, uh, you know, University of Maryland certification. I went through the sales university and I was actually applying my skills to the job. There were people that felt threatened by me having those skills in, in that job. I seen so many people come in and leave. Like I seen so many people not survive. And instead of the company saying, we're going to hire 40 qualified people between July and December 31st, no, they hire a hundred and something people because the management and all that stuff is so bad that by the time they get done hiring a third, the hundred and something people, if they end up with the 30 or 40 people that they want to keep anyways, for whatever reasons, emotions, so-and-so, no, so-and-so, uh, personality conflicts or whatever, like they eventually, they hire the hundred and some people and then they end up with only 40 some people anyways. Because because uh, they tell you to clock out early. So you're basically on your check. You're not even getting 80 hours. Like, what was the purpose of giving me an offer letter? And I don't even get 80 hours of a check. Tell me. This is a new world to me because I'm confused and lost. This is something totally different to me, guys. I think I might go back to property preservation. I need to contact Sally Mae. <laughs> For real. Take what I learned from that company and build my business and move forward. That's what I'm gonna have to do, unfortunately. Yeah, I have I know exactly what's coming in the mail. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know exactly what's coming in the mail. And then my question is like with the leave thing, y'all could tell me you may not you might not know, you might know. With the leave thing, uh the, I don't think that's a paid leave. So I'm trying to reconcile the money I make from there. And the hours I'm putting in and, and the uh, psychological, like it's, it's an entanglement. You know what I mean? Like it's a, it's a psychological entanglement with that. But I've been in a psychological entanglement with that. Never in all the time that I had been doing my own thing up to this point had I had to be at this stage. Y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's that's like craziness. So I had the skills for the job because clearly I was able to prove that I had the skills for the position, but it's just not, I need to be in another sales position. I like selling. Apparently I love selling to people. So I need to be in another sales position on top of maintaining this. So it's the end. It's the end of that guys. It's a year of new beginnings. Yesterday was the very, I didn't come on here yesterday. I wasn't, my mind was not, I, I wasn't even, it took me all day to reconcile trying to come back to the company today because there's so many moving pieces and things going on that are not positive with that position. If, you, if you've ever been there, you would know. My, my daughter tells, my daughter says the same thing about certain generations of our people, of Americans or whatever who didn't care about having unions and didn't care about 
protecting employees, and it became all about the corporations. My daughter said the same thing that you're saying. We didn't hold corporations and stuff like that accountable. And now look at these. Now look at these. We have a whole generation that's just totally lost because they've never seen what it was like to halfway go to a position and just be treated decent. These positions, they're not treating you fairly. They're not treating you decently. It's a lot of like petty. I feel like um, with a lot of these employees and stuff that you work with, they're very immature people. Like these people are 30s, 40s. 50, 60 years old. <laughs> yes. Is it just me? I got to move forward, guys. So I wanted to give you all that update. I'm going to download this video and put it on my other channel also, my houseless channel. If you have not been able to go to that channel or you don't know where that channel is located, I will put it here in the comments. I, my, I don't have no problem getting a job, guys. Like I know how to interview and get a position, but it's not just getting jobs and getting positions. What's going to happen once you have a start date? Then what? Okay, so now you're thrown in a Zoom. You're in training. You're looking at all the politics of who shot John and who know who and who make what and who do, do this and that. How long is a position going to last? What if this didn't happen to me twice? What and in this eight month period, I've had gotten hired. I've gotten hired three times. Okay, one position couldn't. The position never started. It started, but it didn't. And it was a mess. So my question: Once you get the position, because if you go on LinkedIn, you can see people have been getting new jobs every three to six months, and most can last at most a year now. When I first started in the job market and started working position, that was like a temp job. People that only stayed on the job for like a year, that was like a temporary job. That's not like a real full-time position if you're not there for three years. The last positions I had when my daughter was junior, I mean, a, a toddler, were like two years plus. You'd be on a position for two plus years. You would thank you so much. Thank you for the happy new year. Happy New Year to you. You would not be on no job for like three months. You played a long game, right? My mother was on her job. My mom retired after 30 years. Yes, you don't make the money you could make if you bounce a little bit. But the problem is you can't keep these jobs now, these positions. They trying to get you out every chance they get. Like they would, they would, it's basically a game of whack-a-mole. I literally seen a hundred and some people get dwindled down to 30 some people that then got dispersed in the end. And I know that I'm not the only person that's seeing this. Okay. Six months and then you have to get ready to leave. <laughs> I lasted on this position for eight, eight months. I was on this job for eight months, guys. Through it all, through the moves, through the highs, through the lows through watching all these people get whack a mole Like I was there for a while. <laughs> so it's not one of those things that, um, <laughs> it's not one of those things where you just like, oh, it's just, I'm just on a soapbox or something complaining. Two and three months, you have to be ready to leave within two or three months on these jobs. Did we ever, I mean, I'm aging myself here. It's wild out here with these layoffs. If they can't get you one way, they're going to get you a different way. They use workplace policies to whack you on the head with this. Then they use your scheduling to whack you on the head with your scheduling, throw you in a crazy schedule. Then they use your hourly wage to whack a mole you another way. Then there's the infighting within different departments. And then there's people from different departments pinging and tagging you and emailing you. And it's like, the focus is not on keeping these clients. The focus is not on making money or revenue for the company and being productive because that money doesn't trickle back down to the employees making the money. So the job is kind of like, like I was telling Kaylin this morning after all of that, it's kind of like a hobby or something. Like it's, it's like a hobby where people go hang out, but they don't really make that much money. But it's like a hobby where people go hang out. 
mind you, you got your license to do this. You got to do your retraining and your CE classes every however many years. Like this is not like a, this a little position where you can just get into it through customer service. If it's going to be run like a call center, then I might as well do call center work. Why would I need my license to do that? Right, guys? Y'all see what I'm saying? <laughs> they expect black women to be to do doubles and at work every day. Yeah. They want you to be on that clock 24-7 to make $2 an hour. Two. $2 an hour. Like, hi. So we're going to need some people to leave for today. Who's volunteering? Or are you going to be voluntold? <laughs> We're going to send you an offer letter. It's going to be $22 an hour. You get on the job. Due to unforeseen circumstances. That's what happened with that last position, guys. You, I'm all excited. I'm like gullible in some, some ways. I'm all excited and stuff. I'm like, yay. And then it's like, oh, it's over already. It's a bad date. <laughs> I wanted to tell y'all what was going on. I'm going to come on here and be going live. I'm also going to work on something else. In the meantime, maybe look for something else. I'm scared to look for stuff at this point. It's, it's kind of like you just not not knowing what the variables and what all is going to change. And it's it's not like a position where like we were in years ago where you could just go to the position, do your job. You might have a person. You might have one person that might not like you. Cool. That's life. No one. Not everyone's going to like you no matter where you go and what you do. Not everyone's going to like you. But when. This poly, when it's so messy to the point where you don't even know who, I mean, you th you're like everyone's a friend friend of me at this point. Like you don't know who is what, why, and, and and it seems to me like there's no purpose behind it, other than maybe they're trying to survive. Could y'all at least agree with that? Maybe that's what it is. They're trying to survive their job. They've been there however many years, and people are inanimate objects. No one's important. No one's special. It's it's all just like one big click that that com continues to morph and change because the click don't even stay the same like one week you're not the, the job don't the the job for the average person lasts three months if you line up a hundred people that got hired by the end of it i think you, you might have 10 or 15 people left no 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 y'all ain't hearing me They'll hire a hundred and some people and it'll get whittled down to 10 to 15 people. And then over time, within the next six months after that period, after six months, those people are gone. They're not there anymore. You can't have a business that thrives long term. The only people getting rich are the people at the top because they don't really care what's happening to the people at the bottom, right? Exactly. That's what I'm going to have to pivot and do and move forward. Other people can work there. Other races of people can work there because they actually live together and they have a group think. But being independent, you can't be working for pennies. You can't. Yeah, you can't. I just wanted to give you all this because it was a major shift for me today. And I did. But but I didn't feel sad or hurt or whatever. It was like, okay, I don't even have time to even be uh, emotionally no type of way. I went through all them emotions while working there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like being bullied in Zooms and stuff like that. Like I went through all that already. It was so, you know how if you've ever been in a bad situation where it's so, so many disappointing moments, being homeless hasn't been half as disappointing as working that job. That's crazy. I had so many horrible, horrible lows. I had a few, like maybe two or three highs and 20 plus lows. Like the low was low. The low was so low, guys. Like that's crazy to me, to me. I'm not entitled and important. I feel like I'm not entitled. I'm not an important person. But when you're in a position where nobody 
thinks that somebody need to be of some level of importance and the manager, nobody has to be, nobody has to police themselves and their behavior because at any, any point that department is going to be laid off or that person's going to be gone anyways. So, so you really, it's like, it's like a means to no end. Does that, does that make any sense to you guys? Like you can depend on a situation being so bad. That's the only thing you can depend on is it being bad. Energy drainers. And all fast food workers in California are getting twenty dollars an hour. Yeah, I know. I don't know. It's gonna be a lot of them being laid off. But for the ones that do stay, I gotta get my energy back. I haven't seen you in forever. Jeff, Jeff the facts, AOL. <laughs> so I just wanted to give y'all that update. What's going on with me or whatever. If I don't figure out the internet thing by tomorrow, which I'm more than likely, unfortunately, I probably won't be able to, then what I'll do is probably take a leave and I have to go from there. I just have to go from there, you guys. I don't can't even I can't I wasn't even disappointed. It was that bad to the point where there's nothing that surprises me or disappoints me between the tech issues, the personality issues, the job changing, dealing with the clients. And then just watching massive amounts of people just leave. You just, there's no stability in it because you can't get stable because the situation is not stable at all. Like there's not even a, an, an inkling of stability with the situation, with the job. I've never been at a job like that, guys. I work bad. When I say I work bad jobs, it's more like, the job itself wasn't just exciting, right? I actually enjoy doing insurance. But that company? Leave y'all's comments below. I want to give y'all the update. That's the end of that, man. I just... I just... <laughs> the workplace has become so toxic and people don't say nothing for fear of losing their jobs. But you don't have no one to go talk to. That's how bad it was, guys. The person you think that you're going to go talk to that is trying to have some inkling of decency, that's a person that doesn't care either. Because you got to look at when you have a revolving door like that, you got to be a sort of type of person to even try to survive it. But And then coming in in different seasons, you ain't going to make it. You're not going to make it during a different season. It's going to depend on how bad they need people, but they don't care about needing people because so many people need jobs that every new person is like fresh meat. <laughs> you can't. You can't vent to nobody. <laughs> and the person gunning for me the most was a black woman, guys. It's a black woman gunning for me the most. The person I actually sort of thought I... And I, I feel stupid now, but when I came in, I looked up to this person. Like I was like, oh, this is so nice, this and that. Dumb, gullible. This person was gunning for me so hard, guys. If they not whack a mole me in one area, they're going to whack a mole me in another area. They're going to beat me over the head in another area. They're going to switch me to another this and that. They're going to throw me in a Zoom, I get bullied some more. Throw me in another Zoom, I get bullied some more. And then I'm just like, okay, what's the end goal here? You want me to make sales, but then you cut off my calls. You you turn my calls on when everybody else is overwhelmed and all I'm getting is other people's calls and people overwhelmed and just it's a mess. And somehow, some way, I'm still able to try to be productive, right? <laughs> Leave y'all's comments below. I want to give y'all the update on what was going on in the background. of When y'all see me disappear like that, it's other stuff going on. When I actually disappear completely, I have a lot going on to where I'm just like over it, you know? It was a black manager. And I think she was, but it was basically like only one manager over the program because it's like just a program itself. Within other, they have other programs too. And then every time they lose a contract or the contract goes dead or whatever, like they just move different people around. You just get moved. You can't never say, oh, I'm going to be with this program for a year. 
Like you'll get moved. See what I'm saying? Then it's like starting all over again, if that makes any sense. So anytime you starting all over again, I know this by going through this process of being houseless. Like I, I understand that part of it. It's like when you go to an Airbnb and you order all your food and you order canned goods and they don't have a can opener. Now you got to wait a day or two before Amazon deliver a can opener. And then you ain't got a car so you can't get up and go make that move. It's like everything surmounts. It's surmounting. See what I mean? You, uh, somebody's uh, MBA, got an MBA uh, degree or whatever, and you working at Chase for $20 an hour? Yeah. So I'm not on my soapbox. I'm not upset. I'm not in an emotionally fragile stage. I'm just persevering to the next thing because I don't have a choice. <laughs> you don't have no choice, right? And when these people are in these horrible, horrible, I, I, <laughs> I lose my train of thought. It was just so bad. But when these um, people are in these horrible, horrible, horrible positions and jobs and companies or whatever, like there is no reasoning with them. See what I mean? Because I think it's there. Everyone's just waiting for the day that they get the email or they can't log in or they can't clock in or whatever. Like they're just, everyone's waiting for that point. I mean, you have people basically talking to you in a zoom and they don't want to get on camera. I used to be the person to always get on camera. They said, everyone turn their cameras on me. Cool. Now, these people don't have no picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they not on the Zoom. They not looking at you in your eyeballs. They do not have no picture. They dead on. They are dead on in avoidance. It's layers and layers and layers. It's, and you know what it is? You can just sense. Before I get to that point, I don't want to be that person. But you can just sense that it's layers and layers and layers of trauma. The job is traumatic. You need, you almost need therapy <laughs> after you leave. <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. That's crazy. So I just want to get on here, y'all. I want to give somebody some hope today. Look, I have about two weeks projection financially to where I can just survive for two weeks. Two weeks now, two weeks. So I have to make some miracles happen. I won't say it's a miracle. It's doable. But I have to make some money moves in the next just two weeks. I'm not going to no stripper pole, and I'm not going to do nothing where I can't look at myself in the mirror when I wake up in the morning. But what I will do, guys, is continue to hammer it out on the channel and hammer it out in the private groups because I do have a $5 special. I didn't even know I had, um, I didn't even know I had like 85 people that were free members. I have 85 free members in one of my groups. I have another 40 something free members in another group. So if you get an email from me, don't be in your feelings. I may at least, I may at least push the $5 membership to you for one of them private groups. In the meantime, I now have time to where I can actually think and process all of this. <laughs> That's crazy, right? I didn't even know so many people were joining the free membership. So what I'll do is I'm going to send you an email if you left me an email. If you haven't left me an email, you join the free membership, just go back over there, put your email in. They need to start requiring y'all. I mean, I'm not one. I'm not going to spam your emails. Okay, I am not going to spam your email address. I might send you one email a week at the most, but I'm just going to put a reminder in there. And then I also have to, of course, start putting a lot more content. Now I have my time again. I only have a minimal amount of time though to get this going, get it, get it go back on again or whatever, which is fine. You need a therapist after you get done with them jobs. That's crazy. So leave y'all's comments below. Tell me what you think. Y'all stay positive. I want to encourage somebody today. If I can get up and do it, you can. You if if you have the cushion of having assistance and help and people you can live with. You can push through another day. I think the problem is when you live with people is that you're dealing with their issues and then they're dealing with your issues and y'all's issues become issues. And that can be a challenge within itself. 
But if you can breathe a little bit easier than me, you can do it. You need a vacation after them jobs. <laughs> you, need to, you need to lay in bed for like four days. Not me. Medical field is booming with jobs. I'm not in the medical field. I do do um, insurance though. So I will be pushing that in my Facebook groups. I'm going to be in a Facebook group getting beat up. I'm cool with that. All right. I'm probably going to go live on Facebook if I need to. And get my numbers back up again. I don't really like Facebook, but I'll do it. <laughs> Tell me what y'all think. Leave y'all's comments below. This is the update. Y'all stay positive. Get yourself to the next level. It's a brand new year, a brand new you, a brand new mindset, brand new positivity. I hate doing crime videos, y'all. I don't really want to do them. I need the. I just need to do the numbers, though. So I may transition more into dating on this channel. I like doing the dating, too. It's fun. So I, I think I'm going to continue to do a little bit of the crime videos, the filler items. Then I'm going to do the celebrity news on my new channel, which you should have it already. It's the, it's the picture where I have my, I have like a purple shirt on. That's the new channel, if you haven't seen it. And then on top of that, I will go ahead and do the dating videos on this channel going forward. Dating and crime. They go hand in hand, don't they? They do. <laughs> so, and then I'll continue on to hammer things out in the private groups. I, I need to re restructure my private groups to figure out who's in there, who wants to see what, and things like that. Y'all know what I'm saying? So if you want to email me, you can email me here at diversitydaters at gmail.com. That's the only that's the only Gmail that I have that ain't completely filled up. Bad businesses may be a topic. <laughs> that is horrible. I don't I feel sorry for the people who just I don't even think this gener. I don't even think when we lose our jobs now. I don't even think if we lose our jobs, get fired, get laid off, get soft fired, get rack a mold. I don't even think we cry anymore, do we? <laughs> if it's so bad, you just be glad. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> you you ain't gonna be glad in a couple of weeks if you don't have your money right. But you you at the moment you're like, ah, I can breathe again. So leave y'all's comments below. That's the update. That's the end. I'm 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 nearing me. I'm basically at the edge with no parachute. Okay. <laughs> but y'all can you can still stay positive. God give you one day at a time. So you can still be positive even though it's negative. You can still feel good about yourself. You can still get up. We fall down. But we get up. That sort of thing. Okay. No, they don't have no, that, that, that employment situation, I don't know what's going on in Texas. But I'm going to be blamed though, right? If I can't get the internet thing together, then I'm going to be blamed. And then even the unemployment, I'm pretty sure they're going to find some type of loophole. Okay, see where we're going with this? And it depends on who you get in the unemployment office. I haven't been on unemployment in 10 years. So it depends on who you're going to get. 10 years, Kaylin's her age, <laughs> like 10 years. So leave y'all's comments below. Tell me what you think. Y'all stay positive. And I'm going to catch everybody on the next broadcast. What are your thoughts?